Good morning and welcome to the Sugar and Crumbs Kitchen on this fine, beautiful, sunny Friday morning. Um, I'm Karen Griffiths. I have Simon in the kitchen on cameras. Hello, Simon. Hello, Karen. <laughs> good morning. Uh, good and morning. good morning, everyone. And who... Special good mornings to Nikki King and Wayne. <laughs> You've got the Friday Simon special good mornings there. So, Wayne, have you booked on to a class when you won the uh, prize Wayne, draw? Wayne won a prize draw and he was going to book on to a class. I'm just interested to know which class he's booked on to. Um, if he's going to, he's going to really enjoy whichever class it is. Um, today, I'm going, I'm going back to a recipe that I made last September, but I'm going to make it gluten free. I'm going to go back to that good old apple crumble tartlets. Now, I know everyone went and made loads of them, but I just thought, I was waiting for that, as I said last night on the live, I was waiting for my other flower to arrive, and it, it's not coming until Monday, so I thought, what can I do? And I thought, apple crumble tartlets, but let's make them gluten-free. Nothing better on a, a dollop of cream or some custard. Mm. Right. And also today, as I'm going to do the tartlets from fresh and they're going to be in the oven cooking, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to go back to my good old chocolate. There's a few moulds that I need to do for Simon for photographs, so I thought, you so know we have, what? I have an answer. He's got the Jerry Car cake oh, and it's loving it. Amazing! So. I, I, I love that class. I, I was doing the comments, as you know, I was doing the comments on that class and it was a fabulous class that with the car. Absolutely fabulous. I didn't do that one. You didn't, you didn't do that one, did you? It was amazing. And um, to see the end version, it was absolutely superb. So well done. Well done on winning that. And uh, happy cake carving. Right. So, apple crumble tartlets. Apple crumble tartlets. Gluten-free apple crumble gluten tartlets. Yes. I'm going to make a, a gluten-free pastry. And then we're going to we're going to be stewing the apples down. Uh, we're going to make the crumble topping while the we'll make the crumble topping while the pastry cases are chilling in the fridge for 15 minutes. And then when we've made the crumble topping and the all the tarts have gone into the fridge into the oven to cook, I'm going to do some chocolate moulds. Sarah needs a few more photographs. But the the, uh, it's the the website is looking fabulous at the moment with all the um, the chocolates in the top corner, so you can see what the mould looks like when it's been done. So I've just got a few more to do. I'm going to do the large Easter egg. I'm going to do the sphere moulds. I'll get the bunny's head done. And here's the new one that's just got on the website now. It's the medium. Oops, a daisy. The medium platform shoe. How good is that? I mean, that is a real blast from the past, the platform shoes like that. But it's the medium size, so I just need to get a photograph of... What do you of... mean? Like a blast from the past? I, well, when, you, when you used to wear them? When mean? I used to wear them, yes. When I had children, I stopped wearing these high heels because I couldn't push a pram and wear high heels. I couldn't do two things at once like that. So this is a great uh, little... This is a Because you saw me do the mini one, and then you've seen me do what I call the princess, the, the lovely one that I did in the um, the Ruby Rose Wonder Dust. So this is the medium one. So I thought we'll get that one done today as well. So then Simon can get those photographed, and we can get those on the website so uh, everyone can see it. Now, before you all start asking, the BWB moulds... Uh, will be delivered to us when the uh, when the lady the, the supplier has got over her illness she has got uh, covid at the moment and as soon as she's better she is going to dispatch our order to her she has got them in the country they are in the country we just can't get our hands on them at the moment but carol's hoping within the next two weeks we hopefully will have them but we can't promise anything until we know how the lady is let's make oh no the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to uh, peel. Uh, we're going to peel and call the apples, and we're going to put them on to uh, to stew down because they take about ten minutes to stew. And I'm going to be using our gorgeous cinnamon swirl natural flavoured icing sugar. I've got velvet vanilla icing sugar for in the pastry case, just so it's a, a lovely sweet. Because I use an egg yolk as well, so it's a nice sweet pastry. And we'll make the pastry cases and, then we, and I'm going to put extra cinnamon in this time in with the uh, the crumble topping so you've got that little extra kick. Even though we're using the cinnamon sugar, I just want that little extra kick of cinnamon there. So I'm going to put half a, te uh, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, ground cinnamon into it as well. So while I'm just chopping these up, let's talk classes. Who's looking forward to um, the class on Sunday? 
we've got Hannah, the cake illusionist, in doing that gorgeous sculptured horse. Um, so that's on Sunday the 28th. You still have got time to sign on to that one if you want to. Uh, it's a £40... I'm sure, it's 40, I'm sure it's 40 pound class, uh, 40 pound class, and it's going to be absolutely amazing to make a. Br it, it looks like a a, a bronzed uh, horse's head. You know, you uh, get me on camera. Oh, I said, yes. I said, what a bonus! <laughs> a bonus, you get me on comments and Simon on camera. And Carol's going to be doing the course as well, so we'll be getting some sneaky pics of Carol throughout the day, how she's going on with hers as well. Oh, well, that would be. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely compulsive viewing then, isn't it? It's going, to be, it's going to be a good day. So that's on Sunday. And then Monday, I just realised I didn't peel that little apple there. It's only one that I've not peeled. Um, on Monday, we have uh, Julie Rogerson in doing her baby changing bag, the one that you can see behind me now over my shoulder. Um, that is going to be a great class. Again, you don't, it's, you don't have to do them on the day. You can just uh, take notes, sit down with your snacks, with your, uh, your cup of tea, and just generally take in the whole day, watch it, Ask questions, take notes, and then you can go back and do it at your own leisure then so that you're not trying, you're not trying to rush. And I think you'll, you'll really enjoy that. Um, it's a big cake, that one behind me. It's a heavy cake, a big cake, and all the little bottles and the, uh, like the, the bottles of the talcum powder and the baby lotion, they're all made out of RKT, which is the Rice, Cri Rice Krispie mix. So even they're edible. So how good's that? So that's on Monday. What did you call it? RKT. RKT? It's Rice oh, Krispie Treat. Oh, the letters RKT. Yeah, uh, yeah. The... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a word, RKT. You're thinking, who's that? <laughs> So that's on um, that's Monday, um, and then Julie's doing the live on the Monday night. We've Alison got... says, sorry, Mr. Starts, what apples are you using and why not peeling them? I, I, you are peeling them. I am yeah. peeling them now. I didn't peel the first you, you are right, Alison. I didn't peel the first one because I was too busy talking about Hannah's class. So I've got one that's unpeeled, and I'm peeling the rest of them. And these are eating apples. These are golden delicious eating apples. And I'm just cutting them down because I want to stew them down and making apple gluten-free apple crumble tartlets. And you need three eating apples. Right. As opposed was, to throwing apples. To a, yeah. <laughs> opposed to opposed to those to baking apples. So these are these are what you call your eating apples. So these are golden delicious. And yes, you are quite right. I didn't peel the first one. I was too busy chatting about Hannah's class. Because I am so looking forward to watching her do that. It's going to be absolutely great. And a big thank you from Elaine Lawton. You're welcome, Elaine. You're welcome. Um, so, 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 then, so that's, we've got, we've, that's it, we've got Julie Monday night. And then Tuesday you've got Tracy Mann. And it's the first one of Carol's Buttercream Flowers, the new class. Yay! So all you people who are in the old buttercream flowers, you know you're still part of that group. And we're starting with filler flowers. So again, another superb class to go on to. Because if you join the buttercream cream flowers class, everything you learn in that, you can actually take it over to the cupcake bouquet class if you're in that and use those flowers on your cupcake bouquets as well. So you, you're managing to use them for quite a lot of, um, lot of projects. We've got... Going on Friday, uh, she's doing the Mother's Day cake toppers, which is going to be absolutely superb. I've got a few behind me. I will get them out a bit so you can see them. Right, the apple is going in there with, and the recipe is on the website because I'm using the same recipe from last year, but all I've done is I've exchanged the, I've, um, exchanged the flour, the plain flour to gluten free plain flour so they that makes them the gluten free dessert then because other than that it's just apples and it's just um, cinnamon and sugar and butter so i've got the three eating apples it's a tablespoon of the cinnamon cinnamon swirl natural flavored icing sugar i'm going to put a good tablespoon of that in so i like a good tablespoon of that onto the apples and then it's three tablespoons of water. Get that turned on. I'm going to put the lid on 
that. So they're quite happily now just cooking away and I will stir them as they get as they start bubbling I'll just keep giving them a stir. As I said they do take around 10 minutes so we can put that out of the way now. So just what I'm going to just do, I'm just going to show you the Mother's Day ones, just while I'm letting the apples get going, because I just want to make the pastry, because it doesn't take me that long to make the gluten-free pastry. So here's some Mother's Day toppers. Uh, I don't know if you can get an overhead there, can we sign it? I wouldn't mind, please. So I'm just going to. Uh, what do you want? Do you want this? Do you want like this one? Oh, that's nice. I'll just turn. Yeah, yeah that's a nice one. So there we go. That's look, nice. look at that. That gorgeous. This is one that I've said Doe's got to do. So Doe, if you're watching, this is the one that I definitely want you to do. It's this gorgeous elephant one with mum on the front. Then we look at that. We've got. The, uh, the gardening basket with the flowers in it and the bonnet. We've got a gorgeous tea set. We've got three bears. And then we've got the, uh, the, the bonnet, the book and the scarf. Now, Doe said she was also working on some different designs. So you could get a variety of designs. I'm not saying it's all these ones. The only one that I hope it is, is that one, my little elephant. And then so we're going to have, it, you, Doe always makes between four and five models on the day. It's well worth it for the £20, absolutely. Uh, so if you can, you can still got plenty of time to book on that. Again, you can work alongside Doe. Quite a lot of ladies have worked alongside and uh, we, we don't go that fast. We answer all the questions. So you can work alongside Doe or again, you can just take it easy, have a nice day, relax on the city and uh, take plenty of notes and know that you can watch the video back time and time again and you can stop it at certain points so you can catch yourself up and then you can just start your video again so you're not going to be stressed because you can stop and start the video as much as many times as you want to. So that's the great class that's coming next Friday the 5th of March. Um, so Kit Curran says that they've gone to class and haven't had a request to go, go into it, I think. Right. So what you, you, need, need, you need to go to Facebook and request to join you the do. class. You need to, whatever class you bought, Kit, go and find it, on the, put it in the search bar on the Facebook page and it'll bring that class up. And then you click on that cl class and there's a button there saying request to join the group. And it just asks you um, your order number and a couple of questions. So all you've got to do is just do that. And then as soon as your request comes through, the uh, girl, Carol or Karen in the office, they will be approving you to come into the class. So you must request to join on the Facebook. That goes for any of the classes that you buy on the website. Go to the Facebook page, find that class and request to join it. It's, it's absolutely dead easy it is that you will need your order number though so they can just check to make sure that you've uh, requested to join in the correct class so we give these apples a stir and they're starting to bubble nicely there the sugar's melting down the icing sugar with the water i just want these to get nice and soft because they don't take that long to cook in the oven so i don't want to have any hard apple in the oven i want them to be a nice soft apple so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn that down slightly so I can start to simmer it more. And let's get on with making some lovely gluten-free pastry. I've got 150 grams of gluten-free flour. I use the Dove Farm flour from the local supermarket. You can use any of the gluten-free flour that you want to. You can go to the health food shop or any of the, uh, the supermarket's own brands. Now please remember, this is not a gluten-free kitchen. We are not gluten free. I only do gluten free recipes to show you how I do them, how it can be done. Uh, we have, we're not even a nut free kitchen in this area because we use nuts as well. Everything we make in this kitchen does not go to the public uh, for consumption. It, well, it goes to some kind of public, me, Simon, the warehouse. We eat them, but we don't give it to anybody else. We don't sell our products. 
Uh, with a gluten-free, if you are thinking of going down the gluten-free lines as a business, then you have to make sure your kitchen is suitably equipped. You need separate cupboards for all your utensils and for all your ingredients. And on the day that you're going to do your gluten-free cooking, make sure you've put everything non-gluten-free away, like all your utensils, everything's away, and you've completely uh, washed down and cleaned your area and cleaned your cupboards before you get your gluten-free utensils out of, that, you, that you use out of the cupboard. Just going to, that is really giving it a bubble now. Let's turn that down a bit more. I've got this, since Carol bought me this lovely, uh, this lovely new tabletop stove, it's, it's got some power in it. 150 grams of gluten-free plain flour, 75 grams of unsalted butter, with a piece of apple in it. Where did that go? <laughs> and then, what I'm going to do now is, I'm just going to rub this flour, the butter into the flour to make some fine breadcrumbs. I tell you, since I've been doing the lives now and making the pastry, um, does that's all I'm doing. Oh, I just make pastry from scratch now. I don't buy it anymore. I used to buy it in the chiller section. Now I'm just making pastry. So this what's this to make fine bread crumbs. Here we go. I can smell that cinnamon coming through that saucepan. <laughs> And into this, when I've mixed this into breadcrumbs, I'm going to add 25 grams of um, sugar and crumbs, cinnamon flavoured icing sugar. Do says she's got two more models from Mother's Day classes. Wow, great. One you have been how busy. It would look on your cake. Sorry? One showing how it would look on your cake. Oh, amazing. So I don't know what she's done. I don't know where this is posting pictures on the group or right. she's just keeping them secret I can't wait, I'm looking so forward to it so that's great, isn't it because we've got we've got uh, Doe doing Mother's Day this week with the uh, sorry, next Friday with the um, the cupcake toppers and the Friday after, Carol's doing the cupcake bouquet class which is based on a Mother's Day bouquet so again, if you've not joined the Mother's Day, if you've not joined the Cupcake Bouquet, brilliant. Carol shows you how to uh, decorate the cakes. It's, it's, it's a bit of an extra, really. How to decorate all the cakes using the Russian piping tips and fondant and uh, the uh, Wilton nozzles. And then um, she shows you how to put a Cupcake Bouquet together and how to make it all look superb as a lovely present. And if you join that Cupcake Bouquet group, you get access to all the Cupcake Bouquets that were done last year as well. So you have plenty. I think there's 13 on there from last year. So you've got plenty to be looking back on and loads of different ideas for Cupcake Bouquets. Right, we've got some nice bread crumbs in that. So I'm just going to put, just making sure, it's actually, for these tart bases, it's actually 50 grams of the natural flavoured icing sugar, which is going into there. And Elizabeth got up says, what a super class last night with Carol McFarlane. It was excellent, wasn't it? I, I Never was, laughed so much. Yeah, me and Simon <laughs> included. We were really laughing. It was, it, it was, it was, was funny, wasn't it? It was belly laughing, wasn't it? It was yeah. so good. It was great because we had the quick cupcake bouquet class before showing you how to do the box yeah, a lot of people enjoyed it last night. Yeah, the box ones. And then we had the live one with the Nicholas, uh, Chef Nicholas Lodge's Flower Pro. Superb. And as Carol said, there's going to be um, a quick part two on Tuesday at one o'clock to show you how just to finish these sunflowers off because we had to let the leaves dry. So we're going to do a quick hour at one o'clock on Tuesday. So that's going to be superb. Right, so that's nice and fine. Breadcrumbs now. I need an egg yolk. the egg yolk into there and I'm going to mix this down but I know I'm going to need at least a tablespoon of water in there to bring the 
pastry together. I'm going to start with a tablespoon and see how I go. I might need to use a bit more. Look at these again. Yeah, they're softening down really nicely, so I'll keep those simmering away. So that's a tablespoon of water in there with the egg yolk. And you know, it feels nice enough that to be rolling out, so I don't need to add any more water to that at all. So I'm just scrunching it together in the bowl so it comes together. And I'm just going to wipe the bowl down so I'm getting using all the uh, the flour and everything there so that's just one tablespoon of water and one egg yolk and that has brought it together lovely do we know where we're at with the molly creature mini molds no they're not i don't think molly's got them in the country yet i think there's been some kind of hold up with um with like you know with the, with the, the customs and that so uh um, so people pre-order these on. sorry so this is a pre-order. Yeah, they're, they're not they're not here yet. We haven't been given no. any word off Molly that we've got them yet. She is still waiting for them to arrive into the country. Just want to get myself one th one major thing I forgot there, which does help to get yourself a rolling mm -hmm. pin. So I put some gluten-free flour on the board there, and I'm just very carefully. Just going to test these again. And Do says she will start the class with the elephant just for you, Karen. Yeah, they are, they are lovely now, actually. Let me just test them with this. Yeah, those apples are lovely and soft. So I'm going to take those off the boil and just allow them to go to cool down a little bit there. I love that elephant. And what a great way to start the class, Do. So I've got my tartlet tin, which I'll show you in a moment. I just want to roll this out. I don't want to roll it out too thick. It's quite short, this pastry, so you, you do probably need a bit of flour to make sure it's not sticking. And I'm going to use a fluted side so now i'm just using the one at the moment just to make sure that that is the right size that i want going into the pan now it's okay that one but i'm just going to no. tell you what i am going to do i'm actually going to use the bigger one i think it needs a bigger one yeah now. so i am going to go with the bigger one going to roll it up again. Why is it stuck to the board? It's because it's uh, very short so I'm just going to put some more gluten free flour in with it just to you know on the board and mix it together. Let's set that one out there because that was too that was too tiny that one wasn't it? We said too very, tiny. Very yeah it would have been a very um so with, remember with pastry with these these non-stick boards when you're doing a sugar paste and fondant, no, you don't need anything on there. When you're doing pastry or you're doing biscuit dough, you do need to have um, some icing sugar or some uh, flour on there. So that's a bit better there. That's. Uh, Geraldine's not... just got back from the beach and wants to know what we're making. The beach? Oh, that's a word I've not heard in 12 months. Now you're making me jealous now. I she lives there. Yeah, I bet, she, I bet she's been walking the dogs. Walking, is it, what, have you been walking Millie? But, oh. Now you've really made me jealous now. I can't wait to be able to get back to the beach.
You're right, Simon. That is a much better size, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm struggling to um, catch you somewhere. Yeah, because otherwise you wouldn't have had much filling. No. So there we go. Because I don't, but I don't bake these blind. I actually just chill them as they are in the fridge now, and then we're going to put the apple straight into it. It's one of those recipes you don't have to bake blind, you don't have to bake what, your pastry cases first. What madness is that? What madness is that? You're asking yourself, isn't it? What madness is that? I've never heard of such. Roll that again. So have you have you greased the tin or nope. anything? Does it not need it? No, because there's enough in there's enough uh, butter and that in the pastry that they don't stick. I'll just scrape up my little bits there. Let's just roll this other little bit out now. do is you've just got to before I fill them with the apple I've just got to chill them in the fridge between 10 and 15 minutes Um, I'll come do it to come over a bit. Yes. Yep, yeah, certainly. So I'm just making sure it goes into the centre and then just gently pushing it down so it's going into all the groove and just flattening it slightly. There we go. And I've only got I'll get to I should get hopefully get three more out of this as well. Can you make this without egg? You could if you want to make it without egg, yes. I've just done it with the egg because it makes it a nice, it's a, a, a sweet, it's a never noticed the egg. egg yolk. Where do you put that? In with the, when you're making the pastry, you put it in oh. with, with the water. But it just makes it, it, it makes yeah. it a sweeter pastry, yeah. but you don't need to put it in. Yeah. Just put a bit more water in. Yeah, that's all, it, that's all you need to do. Put that one in. There we go. You did add, yes, you added some sugar to the apples, didn't you? I, you added, uh, I added a, a heat tablespoon of um, these cinnamon flavoured, natural flavoured icing sugars to the apples. So they've got a lovely cinnamon taste. And then into the topping, I'm actually going to put the cinnamon icing sugar and some cinnamon, uh, ground cinnamon as well, just to make them like a little bit more cinnamony. Right, these are going into the fridge now while we make the crumble topping. And then we can fill them. Quick wipe down. <clears throat> So is everybody on here, are everybody booked on Hannah's class on Sunday? Are you all, the ones who are ladies are doing it, I've been, you've been making me smile. I've watched, been watching you make your structures, all the power tools have been out, haven't they? <laughs> They've had the power tools out, you've had your goggles on, I've seen, oh, it, it's been so funny watching you all make your, your, uh, your structures. Very proud of you all. Has 
Carol made hers. She had the grinder out. <laughs> Her structure's made. Her structure is made. And that wasn't the, that wasn't the answer to the question <laughs> I asked. There we go. So we can. I just like to tidy down a bit. Dry my hands. Right, let's make some apple crumble topping. In this bowl, I have 100 grams of gluten free plain flour, and then I'm having 50 grams of unsalted butter in little chunks. I've got 25 grams of cinnamon flavoured icing sugar and 25 grams of light brown sugar and I'm also going to put in half a teaspoon of the cinnamon so that is what we need for our lovely crumbly topping so we're just going to put again butter into the flour and we're going to make some nice fine breadcrumbs with this and we do want it to be it doesn't it can have a few little chunks in it because crumbles it crumbles quite nice when it's got a bit of a crunch to it as well so i do i won't make it as fine as what i did for the patient i will leave a few little lumps in there especially with the sugar in it so we get a nice uh, crunchy topping as well Are you ready to be amazed on Sunday, Simon, watching the horse come to life? Horse's head, bronzed statue. Mm. It's going to be good. Mm. And I'm looking forward to Julie's class on Monday. You're not doing that one, are you? Looking forward to that one, <laughs> watching the baby, the yeah. baby changing back there, which is great for a mum to be, or great if the uh, the baby's the new, ar new arrival, you know, welcome to the world. It's absolutely super. Again, if you do want to do any classes, and you're, um, you're thinking, oh, I can't, I'd love, there's two or three I'd like to do, but I can't afford to pay for them all at one go. You can ring the office and they will, um, you can ring the office and you can uh, have all the classes down that you wanted to do and have an idea of a payment plan you want to do, how much you can afford a month. And uh, as Carol says, she doesn't mind if you spread it over like six, six months to pay it. So you, you've got, you can pay, you can do it over, pay, over six months if you wanted to. Or we do have that great thing on on PayPal now, whereas you can do it on uh, three interest-free monthly instalments. Could you go over the ingredients in the pastry, please? I certainly will. In the pastry was 150 grams of um, gluten-free plain flour, 75 grams of unsalted butter, 50 grams of natural flavoured icing sugar. You can use a cinnamon one, you can use velvet vanilla one, any, any flavour that you want to. And it was one egg yolk and I also used a tablespoon of water. As I said, this recipe is on the web website. It's under apple crumble tartlets. The exact same recipe I'm using now, except all I've done is I've swapped plain, the, this normal plain flour for gluten-free plain flour. But I will put this recipe into the uh, into the gluten-free section as well and I'll amend the flour on it so that we can have it in a gluten-free section as well. So I've got a nice crumble top in there that's waiting to go on. So let's put, because I can smell the cinnamon in there, I just want to put half a teaspoon of cinnamon in there. Let's give it a whirl round so it's all mixed in. bit of butter there any bit I don't want to I don't want like big chunks of butter in there there we go so we've got a nice gorgeous top in there so while I am waiting for that I am also I'm just going to start melting my chocolate down melt my chocolate down I've got it in the microwave now so I'll just stir uh, I've half melted it for you so we didn't have to wait for ages. <clears throat> there we go. Put that away. 
So the first one we'll do when we've tempered the chocolate. I'll just manage to get one done before I have to fill the apple crumble tartlets. There we go. The YouTubers are very quiet today. <laughs> have we got anybody on? Well, there's, 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 yeah, there's, there is viewers, but um, Come on, YouTube. none of them have said anything. Are you not saying anything, are YouTubers? Good morning. Are you going to give us a comment? I've got the prize draws to do in a bit as well for you. So I've got the prize draws from the Friday, Jerry Chew's Monday night one, and the last one last night that Carol did. So I've got three prize draws to give away. So again, as I've always said, you ladies who love doing chocolate, look at Ollie's class introduction to chocolate, which is on the 8th of March. Super class to get involved in because he's going to teach you all the uh, the tempering, how to temper the chocolate, how to troubleshoot if your chocolate's not gone right, and that's a, a morning of showing you how to do that. And then he's going to be uh, answering all your questions, so have your questions ready that you want to ask him. And in the afternoon, he's going to be showing you how to make chocolate shards, chocolate ribbons. He's got chocolate bowls. He's going to use some moulds. We don't know which moulds he's using, but he's going to he's going to show you be showing you some moulds as well. And I think even Carol's coming in on that one at the end because they're going to decorate a cake with chocolate with the, uh, the, the collar and the bows and the ribbons. So how good is that going to be? And that's on the 8th of March. So I'm just getting this to cool down to my temperature that I want it to be. But I don't use a thermometer. Uh, you'll find out that big chocolatiers, they don't use thermometers. Ola doesn't like to use the thermometer. He likes you to... Uh, do it on what I call the lip test. Hi, Helen Cakes, our first YouTube commenter. <laughs> Hello there. Is it Hel Helen? Helen. Helen Hi. Cakes. I don't Hel think Helen cake Cakes. Cakes is necessarily a surname. <laughs> Hi, Helen Cakes. Thanks for watching. We've got any more questions on our on our group? That anybody would like to know any questions, any answers, is there anything you want to ask me? Carol has placed the order. So there are a few yeah. people who are watching on YouTube but commenting on Facebook. Oh, well, that's great. So, so that's... you can have it on the big telly, isn't it? I don't yeah. blame you. Sit in comfort, watch it on the big telly. So Carol has placed the order for uh, Chef Nicholas Lodge's, um, some, for all the moulds that, that Carol was using last night and the ones that are out of stock. So they will be in with us on Monday. that brilliant live last night. I have still chuckling when I went home. <laughs> <laughs> you ladies are terrors. You don't have tormentor. Right, so this is getting cool now. I can tell it's getting cool enough because the, uh, the, um, the callots are getting harder and harder to dissolve into the chocolate. So it's what I call a good a good workout this with the chocolate. I've got a few people who are baking so they're not commenting commenting. Yeah, you just listen as you bake along. Great idea. Not necessarily baking what you're making, but No, it with the yeah, but they're generally baking and they're yeah. making cakes and that lovely. So I've got a couple of uh, callots in there that have not, that's cool on the lip, a couple of callots in there that have not melted down, but I will put those to one side with the spatula or I managed to get them out with my uh, spoon out of the mould, so there's nothing very lumpy in there. Kit is asking, can you paint the chocolate moulds with the colour splash colours? No. No. You can, if you wanted to paint your chocolate mould kit, you're much better using the sugar flare cocoa butter paint, the edible paint we've got. Um, just bear with me a second. Here it is. The Atom of the Flowers. This is what? This is the cocoa butter. 
and we've got loads of different colours on the website and you melt it down in the microwave and then you can use your brush and this is what you can uh, paint on the inside of your chocolate moulds to do your designs or to if you wanted to fill anything or you can colour your white chocolate with any of these colours uh, and they're absolutely brilliant you can colour your white chocolate and then you could uh, use the white chocolate the coloured white chocolate to do any of the floral bits that you wanted to do or if you wanted to do um, like in the blocks where it's got the I love you and the happy birthday anything like that but it, if you're going to colour chocolate you do need an oil based one but I really do recommend these sugar flare cocoa butter paints they're absolutely superb Once you've done them in the mould, you can paint on them. You can, once you've done them in the mould and they've set, they've come out. You can paint on them with the uh, cocoa butter, but you also can use your rejuvenator spirit with your lustre dust. Like if you want to use the gold or the bronze or the coppers, especially the wonder dust. If you've got the um, the ruby rose and that, you can paint with those onto chocolate. You just can't colour chocolate with those dust. It, they wouldn't come up with the same the same sort of sheen that you're looking for. Right, that's that one done. We're just going to do the one because then I'm going to get the, we're going to fill the tart cases. So let's do this gorgeous egg, which is coming back into stock. So it's a BWB, three part mould. And this is why it's three parts, because you get three parts to it. <laughs> clever me. <laughs> Very clever me. Thank you for that explanation, <laughs> <Karen>. <laughs> So you do get... You get the bottom bit is a little bit bigger, bigger than the top bit, and you have a line. You can visibly see the line when you look at it. That's where you fill the chocolate up to it. So you can physically see the line. I don't know if you can see it on the side. I don't think it's too shiny to be able to see, but there's a yeah, line. There's a line there, and, and that's just put it on. Just yeah, there you go. Right where my finger is there, that's the line, and you would fill the chocolate up to that line which I'm going to do, and then you've got your very thin plastic piece. Now, please don't throw these away. Don't think that they're just to protect your mould. They're a very important part of your mould. Carol nearly threw them away. She thought that she actually, like me when I first undid it, I didn't realise what they were, but that the, the mould, it goes in there, and then we'll put the other smaller chocolate piece on the top. So let's do this now with this one so you can see it. I want to go up to the line, which I am just up to the line now. Now this mould here takes 350 grams of chocolate. Each mould that you get has a number on it. When you some, can you not see? some of them don't. Oh, some of them. Well, I've, I've, the ones that I've used the BWB, with these ones have had a, a, the three part ones. So it tells me that it takes 350 grams of chocolate in this mould. Put. Uh, plastic insert into it you don't have to press it down yet because the top bit will do the job for you and you just press and press the mould and you can see you press it you put enough chocolate in that you're getting it to come up to that line that's there so I'm filling that mound there doesn't matter if it comes over a bit like it has done on that side because you can scrape that off when it comes out so all I wanted to do was make sure I'd got all the chocolate and I've just make sure I've done that and I can turn it over and make sure the chocolate, yep, the chocolate is all covered in there. It's covered there and then I'm going to put it in the fridge like that because if I put it in the fridge like that it tends to rock. So I don't want it to rock, I want to, I want to put it in the fridge flat down and wait for that to dry now and you'll know it's dry because you can see it all nice and shiny there then you'll get like it looks like it's gone a bit milky and it's where the chocolate's starting to come away from the mould so then you know it's set so that's going in the fridge now and I'll show you that a little bit later on when it's set Right, I've got my chilled tartlet cases out of the fridge. I've got my apple. The pan is still a little bit warm, so where is my tea towel gun? I'll leave that on the tea towel. I don't want to mark the ball, so the pan is a bit warm. And I'm just going to put a spoonful 
of apple. Yes, Anne, if you missed last night, you can watch it on YouTube or Facebook. Just go to our page and it will be there at the top, or second to the top now, because after this one. Just going to put the spoonful in and then I'm going to grind them again and just fill them up. You don't remember to leave some room so the crumble will go on the top. So I'm just making sure I've got got a little bit much in that we'll take it out of there into that one there we go so now I can spoon my crumble over each one of those now now I've turned the oven on the oven is actually 180 degrees C which is gas mark for 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, it's just very carefully putting the apple crumble, so the apple, the, uh, the the crumble topping over them. And remember, this has got gorgeous cinnamon sugar in it and ground cinnamon as well. So I'm going to right to the edges of the case. with a smaller spoon. So now I feel, I'm just going back over them now just to make sure they've got a good a good coating on them. Nothing better than a good coating of crumble when you've got a tartlet. So yes, Jackie, um, it is gluten-free today. It is. I've used a gluten-free flour in the pastry and in the crumble topping. going to put those into the oven now for around 15 minutes or until the, cr the crumble is nice and golden brown on the top and then I'll get them out again so I didn't want to waste any just put it on there and let's put those into the oven now it's Simon's happy day <laughs> Is it because it's gluten free? <laughs> oh, I see. Right. <laughs> there we go. So, get these out of the way. My chocolate has started to set slightly there, not a lot. So, I'm just going to put it in for five seconds. I probably won't have to temper it again, but I will check it. If it's got a bit too warm, then that's when I will put the chocolate into it just to bring the, cur the, the cooling down again. So 
see how I've done with that. As you can see, it's still set around the side, so just giving it a good because it didn't it didn't because it didn't set fully and it hadn't pulled down fully, as in completely set into a block. I don't have to temper because I've just uh, g'd it up a little bit. If it sets completely, then yes, you do have to start doing the process again. I'm just going to test that. Yep, that's still nice and cool on the lips. Just made it a little bit more runny for me. So let's put that into... Let's do our lovely shoe. Thank you, Simon. It, <laughs> I don't want them. I don't want the toes coming apart. So you get the clamps. I've got them clamped together, and I'm just going to pour this into the shoe. Doesn't matter how much I'm pouring because I'm going to coat the shoe, and what I don't need gets tipped out. But I just like to bang it slightly on the table because I'm trying to get it down to the bottom of the heel. I don't want to have any air bubbles in the heel because that is what will break when you're taking your shoe out of the mould. Then I just coat it. Now again, I do coat these twice. So I'll just make sure I go round it, get right to the edges. Don't matter, it goes over a little bit. Just right to the edges. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to tip the chocolate out that I don't need and we're going to leave that to one side a moment while that is um, starting to slightly harden then I can give that a second coating. So let's get a spatula and just run it off the side, off the, off the top. So as you can see I've still got a really good coating in there. I'm just going to leave that just balanced up against just against my tub just to give it a few minutes just to give it slightly harder so while we're doing that we'll wait for we'll do these the sphere moulds and this is where you get the three now this is saying on here it's 27 grams of chocolate per sphere not for the whole mould so it's 27 grams in each one of these that you'll be using It's got the line on it, so I've just got to hold it up to the light so I can see the line. Yep. Oopsie daisy, that was a little bit much in that. So I will take some out, or not being mean, it's just if you take it out, it's not going to spill over the complete top of the mould. I'm just pressing gently in the centre, just making sure that the chocolate is just coming up right around those edges. So that if you are filling the, the spheres and you wanted to make a complete ball, you've got a really good edge to uh, glue them both together. So again, we're covered on there. Make sure there's no chocolate. Right. So they're all nice and covered. So you, with these BWB moulds, the joy is you don't need to double coat them because it's got a nice uh, coating on it already. The shoe moulds and the cake star moulds, coat them twice because you get a good rim on them then. But with having these BWB moulds here, with having these, it gives it a really good edging. And these ones are saying 97 grams per bunny head. 
Now this this mould here makes a back uh, makes a full bunny. You've got the front of the head and the back of the head, so you can glue that together. Glue it together. You can melt it together uh, and join it and have a bunny head. So you could fill that if you wanted to uh, later on. You could fill it with a brownie mixer or uh, with a brownie mixer, make like a bunny cake pot, or you could uh, put like little smarties in it or sweets if you wanted to make it into one of those. Uh, Easter ones that have the little so treats these, inside. Are stock? They are due. Right. It's just that I needed to do these uh, just to show you today. Because I was just doing it while you you knew you need the photographs, but they're hoping to come in. These are the moulds that we are waiting. They're in the country. We're just waiting for our supplier to get them to us. I'm just making sure the chocolate. It's going down to the ears as well. I just want to make sure that I've got them up to the line, that you're supposed to have it up to the line. Where's my face? There's my face. That's all done nicely and look at that. That's so it doesn't matter if you get a little bit leaking out, it doesn't matter there, because that will just come off with your spatula later with your little with your palette knife. You can just that'll just break away so it won't change the shape of your mould. So again, just put it all in nicely and that'll go in the fridge now as well. just got this nice little chocolate block one to do so this is great for if you're doing your drip cakes or you're doing your chocolate explosion cakes and you can make your bars of chocolate and you could do them in any colors that you wanted to if you wanted to get the, like, use the strawberry chocolate or the lemon chocolate that's the green colored orange chocolate you could make all different colored chocolate blocks uh, or just or you can dust them up with your different lusters So I'm not going to make loads on this one because we don't need loads for the photographs. I use it for pastry, didn't I? Oh, I don't like. There we go. So I've got those in there and I'll just allow them to set and then we can slip those out of the mould. I'm just going to quickly coat that shoe again. Did you set a timer for the crumble? I did, I did. I'm learning. Look at the mess you've made. <laughs> shush. <laughs> shush, 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 shush. Look at that cloth. <laughs> shush, 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 shush. Oops. Nearly, look, it was nearly looking oh, Karen God. then, wasn't it? My goodness. Because I'm, because I'm pouring it out with my... My right hand because it's coated nicely in there. I just want to give it a second coat. I'm just going to that's better spoon the chocolate into it. See, a lot of this chocolate's going to come out again. It's just I like to fill it up so that we know everything has been coated completely. It, to get the second coat, so I like to nearly fill the shoe up. I've done that with all these plastic moulds because the motorbike one is excellent as well, it's absolutely great. And we'll get a clean cloth in a minute because I know I'm going to spill some. So, again, I've made sure it's, the heel was the heels 
one of the things is probably the heel goes solid because the chocolate will go down into the heel and it stays there so the heel is quite a good sturdy one and it means that the shoe will stand up so okay so just making sure you're getting the toe part covered so I've got that all filled I'm going round the edges the edges we get that again in a minute that put that back on. I will put that back on I will I'm holding on to it very tightly at the moment There we go. Just let me get my clip. So as you can see, some of the the most of the, a lot of the chocolate comes back out. It's just that you want to make sure you've coated every part of the shoe. If I just scrape the top of it, it just gives the edge of the shoe, the edge of the shoe, a nice finish to it. So we're going to put that into the fridge now, and we're going to tidy the board up. There we go. That's a nice, a nice finish to the edge of the shoe. Put that in the fridge to set. Hopefully, I'll be able to show you the egg one soon. So that'll be a nice one to set. Put that in the fridge. I've got that stood up balancing against a dish in there. Yep, that's balancing against there. And this, what I'm going to do now is just get a nice clean cloth and let's just clean this board up. Clean this up. So you can tell the, the chocolate was tempered nicely because it's set on the board. You need a hot cloth. I, it is what it is hot. This it's, it's warm. It's there we go. So I don't like to scrape the board. You see, usually we're not I'm, just I'm, doing chocolate today. No. Do we have? Apple crumble tartlets in the oven right now. We do. Just about to come out. They are, they've just got about three minutes left. So you can, I'm just using the spatula on the side there so it's not scraping the board. Just so I can get this chocolate off. What you can do, ladies, if you're using the chocolate, is um, put your grease proof paper down or put your piece of cellophane down, and that way you can. Uh, get your chocolate off there and you can always use the little bits again because you can just put it straight back in when it's set into your calibo bag and just melt it down for next time just going to clean my cloth again and then just check the tartlets as I go past oh they're looking good They're just starting to go brown now, they're just going golden, which is lovely. So what I will do is clean up here. I think the big egg, I just looked in the fridge, the big egg, egg looks like it's nearly set. So I can get that out for you and show you the big egg. And again, you can do that as half an egg. So you could do them like these people are all doing these smash ones with the, um, the hammers in there. Or you could just do another one if you wanted to, and then you could join it up together so you had one big Easter egg. Again, these moulds will be back in as soon as we can. We're hoping within the next couple of weeks we have these moulds back into the warehouse. It is unfortunate the lady who was shipping them to us has taken very has taken quite poorly. So we're just waiting for her to get better so she can dispatch them to us. They are in the country, we're just waiting for her to dispatch them to us. 
There we go. You wouldn't have known I'd been anywhere near chocolate, would you? I should just look at my hands and there we go. Let me just put these in the oven. Oh, very nearly. I just want to show you what I mean about this egg. Just put it up here now. I don't know if you can you can you oh it's very hard to see, isn't it? I've got it's going milky. Well, as though the egg is falling away from the shell here. There's a little bit in the centre there just needs to dry that little bit more and then that egg will just pop straight out. So I'm just going to give that a couple more minutes. See how the spheres are going. Just going to How's the crumbles doing? The crumbles, I've just got a couple of minutes, that's it. Is there any questions? Oh, let's tell you what, let's do a prize draw while I wait for the crumbles to be coming out of the oven. Dry that down. Right, so for the 19th of February, um, when I did my gluten-free chocolate coffee cake. Wasn't that delicious? That was really nice. Um, it's Tutti Fruity Cakes. Now we don't know who this person is, we haven't got a name. So if, it, if you know Tutti Fruity Cakes or if you are Tutti Fruity Cakes and you're in the UK, you can win the brownie bundle. You've won the brownie bundle. If you are out of the UK, then you can choose one of the classes worth up to £30. So that's Tutti Fruity Cakes. If you could email the bottom screen now, which is info.sugarandcrumbs at icloud.com. If you inf inf <laughs> I'm doing that. Too <laughs> If you can email those Tutti Work Fruity Cakes and tell them that you've won the live for the 19th of February. And again, if you're in the UK, you've won a big that you've won the brownie bundle. If you're outside the UK, you can choose a class up to the value of thirty pound. Right, and then we had Jerry Chew's class on the 22nd of February. Uh, she did, that's when she'd made the princess cake in the daytime and then went and did those gorgeous little safari animals at the night time. These ones here, weren't they gorgeous? Can you see these? This is what she did at the night time. She made the flower with the cake lace and she did these gorgeous animals. And for that winner, you're going to get the uh, Something for Everyone bundle. And well done, that's Ellen Ball. So well done, Ellen Ball. You've won the uh, Something for Everyone bundle for liking and sharing Jerry Chew's class on the 22nd of February. So if you'd like to uh, email... That's at the bottom, <laughs> info.sugarandcrumbsarchive.com and uh, just let them know that you're called Ellen Ball and you've won Jerry Chew's Live on the 22nd of February and they'll let you know how you can claim your prize. I've got one more prize to give away for last night's Hilarious Live. So don't forget next class as well for Julie Rogerson. Once this baby class has finished, which is uh, the baby bag is on the 1st of March, on Monday, then in April, the first Monday in April, is this one. Look at that, it's the mannequin cake that is like gravity defying, isn't it? Look at that, there's nothing there. It's a little pole. So look at that mannequin cake there. And this, Jer uh, Julie is going to teach you that she's painted on this fondant. So Julie has actually, she's not used any prints or anything. She's actually painted, so she's going to show you how to make this gorgeous dress. Uh, as it's on the mannequin with the, the sleeves. It's got a lovely bow. Look at the detail at the back. It's got that gorgeous bow there. And then she's painted, she's hand-painted on that. And she says she's going to show you how to do it. So how good is that? And it's a heavy cake. And she's also going to show you how to make your gorgeous uh, board. I mean, this looks like it's on a, a wooden flooring. So she's going to show you how to do that as well. So that's a really good class for you to go on. Uh, that's the one, that's the class that's after the baby changing bag. Put that back. We 
We're doing the prize draws now. I've got one left to do. I'm a bit mean. I'm a I didn't give you. I didn't. I didn't I'm give you that last. Just no, I'm that. sorry. It's Tutti Fruity Cakes that's won, and Ellen Ball up to now. So I have. I put my gloves on because I don't want to get any finger marks over my um, over my chocolate egg. So I'm going to take the back part off, then turn it over, and just gently. can hear the timer so look at that look how thick that base is on that egg it's excellent and then you've got Ooh. what excellent e excellent it's excellent <laughs> and then you've got the gorgeous shine on the uh, on the egg there which I will going to luster up later because it looks really great for the photographs it's going to luster that up later so they are so easy to use these BWB molds and they will so the back in stock ASAP, as soon as we, our supplier can get them to be delivered to them, Carol's ordered loads. So again, this chocolate, this board was clean. Let's go back into my chocolate pot that I can melt down later and use again. Take those ones off. Let's have a look at these now. See as the oven was singing to me like that then. The tray out. So there we have our gorgeous apple crumble tartlets. Now you can eat them hot, you can eat them cold, you can have them with custard, you can have them with fresh cream, but I can smell the cinnamon coming through that topping and with having the cinnamon sugar in with the apples, they smell divine. Now, I don't know, it's a little bit too hot to take one out of the tin. I will try, because I know you always want to see one out of the tin. I'm getting to know you all very well now. They are, they're very, very warm. Usually I would leave these. No, I'm going to have to leave it. I usually have to leave them at least five minutes for them to just to harden up a little bit because they're still really, really hot there. So we leave those in the tin for five minutes and then I can pop them out. And they actually do pop out just with a spatula. They're absolutely great. And I'll just check see if any other chocolate's done. If it's not, then it's something you'll be seeing live on the website. I've got one of the balls is ready, so I'll just show you. I've got one there that's completely milky. So well, it's, it's, when I say milk, I don't mean the chocolate's milky. I mean, I've got that lovely sheen uh, against the edge of there, so I know that the chocolate has set and started to come away from the mould. These ones haven't. Oh, but look, this is coming out anyway. It's just being really careful, just... It pops out, you see, it just pops out like that. You just got to be, just be careful and just go around it and look at that. And that one again, that one's coming out as well. So they've come out and um, quick gloves on again. Oh, so we can keep them nice and shiny. And these cotton gloves, Carol's put a link on the website uh, where you can get the cotton gloves from and they're really off, off Amazon and she's put the link on there for you all as well because it's like 12 pair you get for just under £9. So there is your sphere. So you could use those as a dessert and fill those with a nice mousse or with ice cream or you could uh, use them with a brownie or you can glue them together and then you've got your bombs which are quite a very big bomb there very big chocolate bomb but you can glue them together and you've got your bombs as well other than that you can use them singular the three bombs that are done. I don't think the bunny rabbits are ready yet. I don't the shoe. The chocolate blocks are ready. So 
look at them how good are they to go on top of your your your, your chocolate cakes or even to put onto your your little cupcakes they're absolutely great i've seen a couple of cakes on the website now that you've all been doing and you've colored the chocolate and you just stuck them in between all the rest of the chocolate that you're doing so they're fabulous got to fold these now remember these aren't dishwasher safe you better to wash these in nice soapy water these molds nice soapy water leave to dry and make sure they dry thoroughly before you put them away and they even though they look crinkly they absolutely they they work great i mean i've used these two or three times now and they work great so we have our bunny so again what you would do is you could uh, you've made sure all your sides are smooth melt it down on a plate and when you melt it down together, it means all the sides all go even and you can get your bunny together. So then you have your lovely bunny face. Again, you can fill that with treats if you wanted to. You can fill it with treats or you can just leave it as a solid solid bunny head or fill it with um, a, a cocoa pop mix. But we have your bunny there. And the last one to see if it's done is the shoe. The shoe could take a little bit longer. It seems to have gone seems to have gone milky, so let's try it. Ooh. So look. Oops high heel it's a very high heel that uh, you might be better if that was going onto a cake you might just have to stick it into the icing into your icing a little bit just to make it stand up because it's got a very thick base but the the the, uh, the heel is really thin but look at that high heel shoe look at the shine on that what? absolutely beautiful mm. so we've got a really shiny one there so you can you can embellish it. You could put a little bow on the back of the heel. You could put a little button on the front. Decorate them up however you want to, and you can also luster them with anything you want to. I'm going to leave a couple of these plain for the photographs, and then luster everything else up. And then our last, right there, our very last prize draw for last night was Carol doing that lovely live on the Chef Nicholas Lodge's Flower Pro, the Sunflower. And it's a something for everyone big bundle. Well done, Liz Barber. You've won that prize. So if you'd like to email into info.sugarandcrumbs at icloud.com, say my name's Liz, I've won Carol's live on the 25th of February, and the girls will gladly get back to you and get your prize sent out. So well done to all you prize winners, which is Tutti Fruity Cakes, Ellen Ball, and Liz Barber. Well done. Thank you so much for watching me, doing this chocolate and also making my gluten-free apple crumble tartlets. Thanks for staying with me. And I will see all you ladies who are on Hannah's course on Sunday. Me and Simon are back with you on Sunday. Uh, we'll see everybody who's on that. We're looking forward to that day. That's going to be a great day. So we're looking forward mm -hmm. to seeing you all on there. Other than that, I will see anybody who is on Julie's class on Monday for doing the baby changing bag. And then it's Carol's Buttercream Flowers on Tuesday. And day off Wednesday because I work Sunday. And then Thursday is uh, the last one with Carol with the grandchildren. And we've decided we're having a party. We're having a, we're having a, a what we call an end of term party. <laughs> because the children go back to school the week after. So we're just going to have some party food. We're going to have some cakes. Their favourite cakes. And um, so Carol will have a good chit chat as well. So that's going to be really good fun. It's like an afternoon tea party on Thursday. 
and then Friday we've got the lovely dough in again doing Mother's Day toppings and in between that Tuesday and Thursday we've got Tracy Mann you have got a fun filled wow, week. week from Sunday through to Friday so thank you all for joining me today and I do hope to see plenty of you in the classes throughout the week Simon thank you thank you <laughs> my terrible twin <laughs> and we'll see you all again soon thank you bye